And that is the antithesis of what micro-credentials are. What they're not are all the things that you see on the right hand of your screen, such as one-size-fits-all professional learning. And on the other hand, micro-credentials are competency-based, personalized and self-directed. They're on demand, responsive to teacher schedules, so you can do the work on them, uh, you know, in on your computer at the time that you need. Uh, when it's time, you will need uh, time in the classroom to gather your data and then uh, submitting the evidence that goes along with the micro-credential is something that you have from uh, six months from the time you actually begin the micro-credential. So it, it really is a perfect uh, platform or perfect uh, way to fulfill your professional development needs. And the other important point is that it's a shareable portable currency. You will get a digital badge once you have uh, completed and your, um, your micro-credentials and it has been peer-reviewed and accepted. You will get your digital badge at that point. You can share share it on social media, uh, put it on your website, uh, put it on your resume, and it captures a digital picture of the, the specific skills and other information related to that uh, micro-credential. And it's job embedded and practical. Brandy, next? Okay. So how does the process work? Basically, as I said before, it's a, uh, it's a gathered skill of what you've already mastered, and it's also reflective, um, and, and it's a, a full process of documenting it. Um, so there is an outcome to learn. So you will either be developing a new skill, or you're going to be proving your mastery of a skill, perhaps, that you've already developed in your many years of teaching. And so um, Brandy will be getting to this point a little later and, and perhaps Jennifer too, when questions come up as to, well, ex exactly how long does it take to complete a micro-credential? Now I'll let them handle that question, but basically the quick answer is that it depends on your familiarity and your skill level and your mastery. So those are the, the time elements that are uh, tied to that point. Next slide. Okay, so this slide and in the, the next slide is uh, some information that Jennifer provided about a study conducted by Grunwald Associates on educators about the variety of ways that micro-credentials appeals to them. So the top two, as you see, are is an ability to learn new skills. It's at about 70% and equally about honing existing skills. So this is a perfect opportunity for PD for new educators or learning a new skill, as well as honoring and um, showing the competency of veteran educators, um, and when I say educators, I'm saying that purposefully because we have micro-credentials for both teachers and ESPs and additional items uh, being developed for ESPs, which I'm sure Brandy or um, Jennifer will be addressing. Next slide. So these are the other ways that these other reasons go from 50 to about a little over 20 percent. Uh, you see that being access, assessed by important, being assessed by your peers, that's exactly what the NEA credentials do, created and reviewed by the expert peers. Um, okay, um, I, next slide. 
And this is Brandy's segue into talking about the power of support. There's still a few people who aren't muted and there's like a TV in the background or something. If you could mute through, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so one of the things that we've been learning is that when people apply for a micro-credential, only about 53% of them pass the first time when they take it alone. And that's really, that's not a bad statistic because we want rigor attached to these micro-credentials because that's where the, the credibility comes that we can attach currency to for our members. So we've also learned that when you use some strategies to support members who are earning micro-credentials, the rate goes up to like 87% of people who pass the first time. So when I think about this statistic, I really think about how the associations are in a position right now to be that support model. I was talking to somebody this, this morning and they were talking about you know those pre-courses you take so you're successful on the SAT or something. I think about it kind of like that. We wanna make sure that we're giving them that safety net, we're giving them tips, we're helping them pace themselves all the way to that completion point. So when Jennifer gets on later, she's gonna be talking about real specific strategies and how to go about planning that support. But for right now, I just wanted to point out how important it is that we do provide that support and what an opportunity it is for us to add value to membership through offering this type of support. So we started last year and we wrote about 90 micro-credentials and they were in these topics. So we had started with the Teacher Leadership Institute um, and we, we had the overarching competencies and those were our very first micro-credentials that we wrote. Um, Jennifer Barnett worked with um, members who were part of the Teacher Leadership Institute and they, they wrote those eight micro-credentials and then they followed up and wrote the Pathways micro-credentials. And DEC's not on there, the Diversity, Equity, and Cultural Competence is also a stack and there's I think three or four in that stack that go with the Teacher Leadership Competencies. And then we started to also think about what other low-hanging fruit does NEA have content on that we could re-envision to make it more 21st century. And we had these five curriculums that were traditionally given in a face-to-face -face workshop, train the trainer models. And we um, wrote micro-credentials to align with those. We started with which is the old I can do it curriculum and we had the cooperating teacher curriculum and we went through that content and we, we used that content to write micro credentials we did that for the English language learners the cooperating teacher the classroom management the bully free schools and the supporting LGBTQ students we also at the same time we wrote some blended learning curriculum that aligns with that so now we have two pathways into this, these topics. Then we started to look at, okay, so what are the high need areas out there? What are the gaps? What are the NEA priorities? And we know that early career educators are a big priority right now. So we looked at the NTAS standards and we wrote 17 micro-credentials that are really excellent micro-credentials for classroom teachers who um, either have been around for a long time and maybe just want to hone their skill in something like note taking and summarizing, or maybe they want to look at differentiation, but they're also really good entry points for new teachers to start to build their toolkit of strategies and skills. So we focused a lot on that. And we also had Nevada who wanted to write some micro-credentials on NBCT, five core propositions. So we brought in some teachers from and we worked on that stack. We um, also worked with our Center for Organizing and wrote some micro-credentials on leadership organizing. And that took up most of our summer last year and really all the way into December, getting those written and then launched out on the platform. We currently have 1,034 members who are enrolled in a micro-credential to earn it today. And we've issued, I think, 47 
um, in the last couple of months, we've, we've really kind of been exponentially getting more and more people applying for micro-credentials. I think one of the reasons is um, that we have a few school districts who's actually offered to give continuing education units to their teachers. And I also think that a lot of them started it three or four months ago and they're like realizing the school year's almost over and they better get it done. So I think those are two reasons why we've gotten so many in the last month or so. So we have a lot of work still. So for this summer, we have 92 micro-credentials in the docket to be written. And we're gonna actually start tomorrow with assessment literacy and we're writing those with Oregon members. And then we're going to also write some arts integration ones this month with Alaska teachers. And we're writing another stack on improvement science for the community schools. The community schools team has informed me that people really are clamoring for their training and we just don't have the capacity to give it. And they thought this would be a good way for um, people who are interested in starting a community school to go through that process of the needs assessment all the way to the end of, of launching a community school. And then we have um, several ESP micro-credentials that we're going to write. We launched the professional growth continuum this year. So we're going to align six of those um, for that this summer. And those are going to be the six kind of big ideas, technology, communication. I don't remember what they all are. And within those, we'll have each of the job categories attached to that so that the evidence will be flexible enough to meet the needs of many diverse jobs. The, and we're writing a stack for building better teams. And these ones are, are exciting because they're working with a teacher and an ESP to write them together. And I think that we might, and I'm not sure, but I think the vision right now is to write them so that it would be a team effort. So an ESP and a teacher would have to work together to earn the micro-credential. They wouldn't be done in isolation. And then we have special ed, which is also another really hot topic. We've had a lot of people asking for. We have more in-task ones, and we have professional learning communities. Um, micro-credential stack and then we have quite a few on instructional coaching just because we do a lot of coaches training for TLI for our blended learning curriculums and for our early career learning labs so we wanted to offer the, our coaches an opportunity to extend their learning but we also wanted to make a way for other affiliates who might want to have coaches trained and developed they can use our coaching micro-credentials to develop those skills. So we're gonna do a lot on it, just instructional coaching in general, but also we're gonna do a whole stack on using technology for coaches. And we're also writing a stack of technology integration. That was one of the areas when we surveyed members that was high need that NEA had very little um, content for was that technology piece. So we're gonna hit that pretty hard too. All right, any questions about what's coming up or comments or thoughts? Brindy, I would love for us to um, <clears throat> just stop screen share and just have a little conversation about the micro-credentials that maybe have jumped out at folks to, uh, of, of great interest or that seem to match some of your local goals or align with some of the, the um, work you have planned for the next year? Would anybody like to uh, share a perspective or thought? You can do that by grabbing the mic and speaking or uh, share your thoughts in the group chat. Don't be shy. Hi, Avery. This is Idalia Shubin from Kansas. How are you? Awesome. Great. I have with me today also an educator who's visiting, um, works in Junction City, and we're meeting today to discuss a lot around uh, trauma-informed classrooms. And I, a lot of, you know, we're just sitting here looking at the list. A lot of what we're seeing um, is looking very familiar with what our teachers are receiving day in and day out in the class, in their day-to-day -day work. Um, what I would really like to see with some of the micro-credentials are opportunities to learn about uh, something that they're not already getting. 
um, and some of the trauma informed and Dr. Kelly, um, well, she's very much, and that's something that I think we're interested in doing uh, and maybe working on this summer. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, and that's good information. Uh, Brandy is always collecting uh, your thoughts and ideas about what, uh, what you want to see and also what you might connect to in terms of what is uh, currently available and what's on tap. Uh, I would love to hear uh, anything that has been mentioned, uh, how it might connect to what you guys um, have done. And yes, Brandy will share exactly the, the link, the culturally, um, excuse me, the trauma-informed micro-credential with you, Adelia, to make sure that you are pointed in that direction. Very good. Thank you, Jennifer. Awesome. Terrific feedback. Anybody else want to share? Thank you for using the chat and telling us a little bit about what where the connections might lie. And this is really important. I'm not I'm not pausing to be dramatic. <laughs> I'm really pausing because I think that this is the most important part of, of how this actually rolls out in a meaningful way. Otherwise, I can't understand why anyone would want to do it if it doesn't already connect in some deep, meaningful way to initiatives or to goals or to the, the work that teachers are, are craving or needing. Uh, so I, I definitely think most importantly, understanding first what micro-credentials are and then finding that perfect way to make sure folks are doing that. Great question, Michelle. Yes, peers are reviewing the micro-credentials. Um, and in lots of cases, they were the ones who uh, were part of the development of the micro-credential to begin with. Now, obviously, as we get larger and this scales and there are more and more submissions, there will have to be, you know, we'll need more than just the team that developed the micro-credentials. We'll need lots more. So probably some of the first folks in line to help be part of that assessment pool or that, that group of peer reviewers will be folks that were the early earners of those micro-credentials that are able to raise their hand and say, I would like to be trained to, to, uh, for these types of, of assessments. So we definitely consider the classroom teacher uh, the expert, and that's, um, that's very much. And they are definitely uh, veteran educators, so. Um, so Yes, go ahead. Patty, do you want me to kind of share what we're doing out here in North I, Carolina? I would love that, Patty, because you've got okay. some fantastic stuff going on. Please do. And I just saw another one that Brian just asked um, that I can kind of help in that. But in North Dakota, because, you know, we kind of laugh that what most people might consider a suburban district is our urban districts, and the majority of them are rural. So we are launching statewide 100% um, of the micro-credentials with a soft launch right now with um, essentially kind of like a pilot to see how they go and then a hard launch uh, middle of August beginning of September and we were able to get every single current micro credential certified for credit graduate credit through the University of North Dakota so we are really really excited there um, on how to go through it and how this is going to work because we're figuring this is just going to take off um, Brian I know you asked about ethics Actually, that is one of the things that we're very well known for out here too. And I know we've been, um, Rochelle and Brandy have talked to us a little bit about coming out to help write some on ethics too. So um, that's where we're looking at going to. But yeah, it's it's been a quick process that surprises me, but it's been actually really awesome. We're really excited. Thank you so much, Patty. And please uh, ask Patty questions in the chat. I know she has been phenomenal in her planning and thinking, and I know she would be glad to share uh, where she is so far. And some of the others of you may have, have gone a little further down the road, and I hope you would be willing to share that uh, as well. What I want to do at this point now, we're going to shift and talk really about planning and implementation. I'm gonna go through a very specific checklist with you of some things that we recommend to you to consider uh, so that you can be prepared to address everything that needs to, and I love the, I love the comment. I could so see myself in that one today. Uh, 
There we go, Brandy. Uh, so we're going to talk about planning for success. So you, there might be a lot of questions you have, and I completely understand that. So darting into this without knowing exactly where you're going to land on the other end of a early implementation, I understand that you may start with particular questions. So that could be part of the very first step. Now you're going to see, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine steps, I guess, uh, are nine tasks that need to be completed. And within each one of these, there are a number of other things. So let's just jump in to each one of these. And like I said, you will have this complete slide deck and the links to all the tools that I'm going to mention. But the first thing that I would recommend that you do is articulate your goals very, very carefully. So we can move on to the next slide, Brandy. So the first thing is making sure your planning team, and this could be any group. It, it could be a, a group of staff members. It could be some, some members that are part of the planning. It be, could be a particular committee. Uh, however you're configured to, to organize an implementation of micro-credentials, even if it's for just a small group to sort of figure out what your members think of all of these. However you want to do it, it still needs to be planned out and they need to be supported. So first, in articulating your goals, because folks are going to ask you, why are we doing this? Make sure your planning team clearly understands what micro-credentials are, that they've studied them, and that they know what their value is, uh, or what their value is for you and your uh, association. I would want you to take a look at your current goals and objectives and then align what you're trying to accomplish, at least in the early stages of implementation, uh, with micro-credentials. So the action task on this step would be to write a succinct goal statement that all of those that are part of this leadership group have a shared vision. We all understand this together. And yes, that's what we're hoping to learn from this early implementation. The next step seems like a pre pretty simple one, and it is. Uh, the next step, Brandy, uh, there we go. Nope, the other way. <laughs> there we go. The next step is uh, to really decide on your playlist. Brandy covered a ton of micro-credentials. So there are, what, about 90 there, 70, 80 to 90 or 92 or something uh, that are on the, the certification bank site now. And this fall, you're going to have dozens and dozens and dozens more. Uh, so you will have quite a lot. That's a lot for folks that first of all, may know nothing about micro-credentials to start with, to explore. So we recommend maybe a playlist. So you take a look, your, your leadership team should take a look at what's available and choose maybe some particular stacks to start with and customize a playlist that you can present uh, in whatever way you want to. Now, on, on Certification Bank, you don't create a playlist there. This would be basically you just making some le selections and making a recommendation. So make sure your leadership team says, okay, these would be really great to start with. We're no, certainly not saying you can't go out and find any of the micro-credentials NEA has and not work on those. But to, to provide support, sometimes it's a little bit easier if you have a smaller list that you want to work with, especially if you want to build a PLC around it. Just a recommendation, certainly not a requirement. All right, next one. The next, the next item is beginning your planning, uh, planning for your support. Before you plan support, you have to determine capacity. In our session last night, there was a very specific question posed to me about how to how to go about doing this in terms of figuring out really what my capacity is well you need to ask yourself a couple of questions who do you currently have available to facilitate the implementation of this program and what resources are needed in order to provide that support so you might have you're gonna i know it's going to be limited i know you don't have a tremendous amount of time or space it's just like i'm in the market for buying a new car there are lots and lots of vehicles out there and they run all kinds of price points but i first need to determine exactly what my budget is how much i have so these questions are are important for you to figure it out just how many hours do we have available to do some work that needs to be done and then we'll prioritize what needs to be done so let's look at this next slide and helping make this decision. We look at our capacity and now 
we need to choose the support model that we want. And we have tools to help you with this. In our toolkit, we have lots of questions for you to ask yourself, and some of them are listed on the screen. The first thing I would say in, in determining your support model is how many staff members do you have or other educators or members do you have available to provide support? Support could be very simple and low level, uh, touch base, sending email reminders or things like that, or it could actually be coaching in person or, face to, or, or virtual or face-to-face -face types of support. How familiar are your educators with the process of micro-credentials? How much support will they need to understand it? It is brand new. Folks don't know how this works. They're not used to professional learning systems that work this way. So there, there is a learning curve, so to speak, in this. So how much support will they need for that? And where are they on the particular skill sets that the micro-credentials speak to? How much support will they need? And can it be provided virtually? Can it, which is obviously much less expensive than bringing groups face-to-face? -face. Is there a possibility of a combination of both? A few other things to consider. Are the types of support supports that can be provided. In designing your support model, look at all these choices. We don't recommend that you, um, that you we recommend that you choose what's most important uh, and as many as you possibly can. Now, obviously, this depends on your capacity. This depends on really what your budget is in terms of, and I don't just mean your financial budget in terms of how much money do you have to spend, how much time do you have to expend, which generally also equates to dollars. But at the same time, sometimes you do have spare minutes in different places that can be devoted to use for this. But here are some options for support. First of all, face-to-face, -face, uh, let's go back, Brandy. Let me go over this, this whole slide. The face-to-face Face meetings are extremely important when, when learning something brand new before jumping into um, virtual meetings. Weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly email reminders, and we do provide in the toolkit lots of tips and strategies that you can provide to micro-credentials uh, submitters uh, throughout the process. These are reminders to just help keep them on task, things to think about so that they can motor through the process more effectively. And this is based on many, many pilots that we've been running in my organization at the Center for Teaching Quality and the place that we are in supporting NEA in this work. So I'm drawing from a lot of different places and a lot of teachers that I've been working with over the past couple of years in piloting micro-credentials. So this is where a lot of this information comes from. Uh, we recommend office hours, open office hours. This is like a drop-in, a come and go. Uh, they can be done virtually or face-to-face -face, depending on your context so that folks can get just-in-time support. Sometimes individual coaching sessions are possible around particular topics that may have to do with the skill in the micro-credential or maybe it's about the actual submission part. I have heard folks having coaching sessions, they call them feedback parties, right before someone is preparing a micro-credential submission, before they hit submit, they have an opportunity to get feedback from other folks that are in the process as well so that they can send in their very best possible submission and, and not run the risk of being part of that huge number that is, uh, des is denied on their first submission. We definitely want them to be in, in the group that, uh, that their submission um, is, is accepted. Release time sometimes is, is um, some districts are even doing that and working with them to encourage that would be obviously a bonus. Uh, probably one of the big ones that we're going to talk about some more today is NEA ed, ed communities and using ed communities as a place for facilitated support where questions and other information about the process or about the particular micro-credential could be available. Even PLCs around particular micro-credentials that can help and support one another that are going through this process. So your task here would be after you've considered all of these questions, how much time and capacity do I have and what support is needed, let me craft my support model. Okay. The next thing that your leadership team is going to need to do is to plan a timeline. Now, in future reference, when micro-credentials are, people are familiar with these and this process is ongoing, you won't necessarily need a timeline. But to begin with, if you're gonna provide targeted support, 
it is important for you to know when it begins and when that ends. So a timeline is very helpful in this. We're not calling this piloting. We're actually calling this a time period to provide support and then to get answers on the other end of really what the value micro-credentials have for your members. The first thing is to set a period for recruitment. Make up times, dates, locations. If you do face-to-face -face events like info sessions, here's what it is, here's what it's about, here's the playlist, here's what's available, and then come back at another time and have a launch where it's pressing go. Now we start and here, and we're gonna talk about the launch in just a moment. You'll want to survey participants. When are you wanting to do that? We do provide you questions that you might want to use in a survey to figure out what information you wanna gather from this early implementation. You will need to tell them uh, decide what your coaching and support is going to look like and when that's going to happen. You will need a submission deadline or a period when the support actually will stop because they need to know that and you need to be able to plan for that. If they resubmit, if you want to have a period for resubmission, which we highly recommend uh, because the, sub, the, uh, the rate for acceptance does go way up when, uh, when folks resubmit because they do receive feedback on their micro-credential submission. When they are not accepted, there is feedback given, so they know very specifically what they need to do to, in order to earn that micro-credential. You also need to make decisions about surveying your participants and what kind of final report you want to put together. And I'm not talking about a fancy report. I'm basically what were your takeaways? What did you learn? What do you now understand about the value of this program for your members and how you might uh, want to move forward with it? So let's look more specifically <clears throat> at, um, at the launch. This is actually, an, uh, excuse me, at the recruitment. Definitely one of the things that you'll need to do before you're ready to launch a, a micro-credential uh, implementation is to recruit folks to be a part of this. So lots of folks have already been doing this. We do have some sample flyers and promotional materials that you can use and adjust for your own purposes. You'll want to advertise, maybe actually have an informational session or include that as part of another uh, um, gathering that you may have planned for the summer or for whatever period you've decided to do recruitment and then conduct those information sessions. So there's going to be some promotion that's going to need to go on and quite a lot of information is going to need to be set before folks can press, press go. So after the recruitment period has ended, then we will have the next step which is actually launching this. So you'll need to promote that launch and let those folks, maybe you do a Google form to, for folks to sign up during recruitment that I'm interested and then set the date for this is when we're actually gonna launch. This will be, so your folks that are gonna be supporting them or whoever is going to be in charge of supporting them will know exactly who they have on board. So uh, important, uh, we do provide you some slide decks that you can use for a launch. Uh, we've had several that have launched this way, so we can use those decks. Uh, it's also very important for you to lay out how they'll be supported. So at that very moment that they're ready to start, maybe they get on Certification Bank, they create their account, they know, understand a little bit about the technology, they understand what the micro-credentials asking them to do, and so on. Then they also learn, here, here are my benchmarks, here's where I'm gonna be supported, and here's who I access when I have questions. Or if it's ed communities, we actually get on ed communities and, and get started in that so they know how to, um, how to move along. After the launch, then we, the next step is implement your support plan. The plan that you spent all this time making sure you create. Now, if, you're, if your implementation is a full school year, you look at how, whatever, if you have monthly activities, whether it's emails or newsletters that go out or you offer office hours or you have a touch meeting, a face-to-face -face, or a feedback party or any of these types of ideas, you put them on a calendar and then you just follow through. It's crucial. It's crucial to be in contact as regularly as possible throughout the process. Rather than launching and then touching base, say in April, how'd it go? Uh, we can guarantee it's going to not turn out as positively as what you hope if you have uh, some type of constant communication. And we're trying to make that really easy for you by providing you materials that you can use uh, to make those, those contacts with them. And then we're getting close to the end. 
And then it's survey time and you will need to make some decisions before you even start what evidence you want to capture to figure out how effective this has been. Do you want to uh, survey them before they start and then at the end to determine the value of micro credentials for their practice or, or the value or what they might see moving forward? Do you want to uh, actually have a virtual or face to face conversation with those who've submitted micro credentials? It's important to also talk to those who've submitted or those who dropped out of it or those who submitted and did not receive the micro credential. They can provide you a tremendous amount of information about about the reasons what went wrong what or what didn't appeal to them uh, it's important to to talk to everyone that was part of this and then analyze those results and share them back not only with others at your local in your local context and state context but but definitely share them back with uh, Brandy and Sonia and others at NEA so they can uh, be more direct and and um, effective in their planning. And then the next is the toolkit. We have, um, we have a, it, it looks pretty simple, three, three links, but this toolkit, the planning toolkit has um, information for everything that I just covered. There are, there are resources and links to other information that can help you. We have a link to this particular slide deck that we're on and we also have a link to another slide deck that can be used um, to launch your your um, your implementation this all of these um, uh, pieces of information are in Google Docs and the reason is because we periodically update them uh, the more we learn the more we work with others who are uh, in this process and working through micro credentials the more we uh, know about what to add to this uh, which is extremely important um, I can add the links. To, yes, I'll add the link to this slide deck to the to the chat box. Absolutely. And then you can access this. Uh, Brandy, you want to talk just uh, a little bit about NEA, um, excuse me, about ed communities in NEA 360. Yes. So one of the things that I've done is I've started an ed communities group for micro credential education leaders. And I know many of you are already in that group. Um, this is a great place for you all to have conversations about what's going on and share your ideas and resources. Um, I have all of the materials that I have for micro credentials are housed in that group. So if you want a flyer, it's in that group. If you want the link to this slide deck, it's in that group. If you want a recording to this video when we're done, it's in that group. So please join if you are interested in following this story. That's my go-to place for disseminating information. Um, other Go ahead. This is Idalia again. I, quick question for you. I was visiting the site last night because I was wanting to find a flyer. I know that we you had initially put together a flyer that had listed some of the uh, initial micro-credentials, the groupings, and in that embedded was the My Learn, My NEA Learn, uh, Bank certification bank, right? That's the website. Um, the website is nea.certificationbank.com. Right. Do we have a flyer um, that we can go ahead and brand with our state affiliate and contact information that has that as we're starting to promote in Kansas? I would really like something that's already laid out for me with some of the information that we can just add and personalize with our branding, our state affiliate branding. So our national flyer is a PDF and it's not, we're not able to um, change that branding. You could probably stick a logo on top of it as an image or something. There's probably ways to do it. Um, we, we have some flyer templates in our toolkit folders that we've used for launches and stuff but we don't have a customizable flyer right now. Okay, yeah, I did do that. I was able to manipulate the PDF, but the one that you initially created has that website link. It's embedded in there. It's very, very hard to find um, within the text, the way it's written in there, because it's not, it doesn't stand out. So what I was really wanting to do was kind of make that so that that website or that, 
it's just easier to see on the flyer. Adelia, one of the best things to possibly do, because right now there aren't like uh, prefab flyers, we're kind of in the process of developing a lot of these materials, that that's not available. But what you could do in that Ed Communities group that Brandy's talking about is actually ask folks for anything that they've already created to share there in a format that you could edit if that makes sense. Okay. There, are, there are a number of folks that have already walked through a little bit of this uh, recruitment information sharing process and, and have some things that they might be willing uh, to share. Very good, thank you. We, de we definitely want uh, to provide you a place to save you as much time as possible. Yes, and if you could, even the initial one that you had put together, I didn't find that one on the website. Is it? I mean, I, I, oh, you mean on Ed Communities? Uh -huh. or, um, I'm not sure. Brandy would need to answer if that if that's there. A lot of these, uh, quite honestly, Adelia, we've been working in Google Docs with some of the early adopters, and each one of these groups has had a folder where they've been putting some of these things. So, um, uh, what we'll need to do is is make sure that those can be moved over to Ed Communities because it makes it makes most sense for us to 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 put a, a list, a folder of, of documents there. Okay, will you be sharing the Google Doc link with us today? Well, uh, the, uh, the link in this slide deck, I just put the link to the slide yep. deck in the chat window. That mm -hmm. will get you to the toolkit and to the launch slide deck and to this particular one. It's not a link to a Google folder, uh, but we'll definitely make sure that some of those uh, high flying items that are in those folders because I don't want to take so something out of someone's folder without sure. their permission. The, the things that we put in there, we'll try to make sure are in ed communities as well. Very so, good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Not, not a problem because I agree with you. Uh, something that will uh, be simple to communicate as much information as possible is really important. So Brandy's in ed communities right now and make a note of this everyone because you've probably gone in before but the name of the community is NEA education micro credential education leaders. So when you're looking for the one to join that is the one you'll want to join. Again that's NEA edu micro credential education leaders. And she's adding uh, some of this information right yeah. now as, as, we, as we speak. Yeah, so if you go to the group files section, you'll see all the files that we've shared right here. Um, you'll also be able to send private messages to anybody who's in this group if you have questions for Patty. I know Patty's in this group and several others of you who are doing similar work. There's a link to the slide deck and there's also on the sidebar, there's a link to our previous webinar. There's a link to NEA Certification Bank. There's a link to a form for ideas for future micro-credentials. And then there's a link to the slide deck we used today. So also, also, yeah, it, you'll see also there, Patty and, and Shelly were having a conversation, scroll on down and, and go through some of the conversation, not that far, uh, right there where Shelly was just sharing um, a, a Google form that they're using uh, to, to basically register and get folks, you know, find the interest level where they are and so on. So this is, uh, this is really um, useful to sort of steal ideas and pick up on strategies other folks are using. Um, so that, you know, Patty asked a question and really quickly, there's other folks jumping in. I mean, from Montana, from Colorado, from Arizona. So we definitely want to make sure that you guys utilize that community because it is a terrific place for you to gather uh, information. This deck is more or less a to-do list. It's a checklist of recommended steps to go through in planning implementation and then, then processing it. But to get the actual tools and information that you need uh, and find out what other folks are doing or have done or are pitfalls to avoid, definitely use Ed Communities for that. Uh, before we move on, we only have just a few minutes left. I would love to hear uh, questions anyone has, comments, uh, information you'd like to share, or information that you need. Anything along that line, please speak up or use the chat. You guys have been awesome using the chat, so terrific. Hey, 
can I can I join in here? There are absolutely. Four, this is Carla from Pennsylvania. There are four of us here in the room who have been listening to this information, and I don't know if other states are struggling with what we are and are or not. I would be interested in knowing. I've typed these questions into the group chat, but is there a way that the system is going to let us know, for example, when one of our members completes um, all the requirements, whether or not they attain, and then once again for us to know when they attain? Because I don't think we're the only state, or even a way that the member can choose to tell us so that they can receive the kind of credit that they still get here, which is ours. And if we can't, unfortunately, we would love for this to change, but we don't see it changing soon. If we can't find a way to be in the information loop to give them hours, we're only going to anger them if they do work and don't get what they need. Is there a response to that, or any other states has any other state solved that issue? Brandy can answer that. We have had that question. Um, I'm sorry, I was chatting. <laughs> Yes, that's okay. Um, the question, Brandy, was about the reports back to uh, to locals about members who have earned micro credentials. I'm sorry, not only who have earned, but, earned, but who've attempted or just their status. Basically. Basically, it's a status update. Yep. I can easily do that. It takes me about two minutes to pull a report by state. That was one of the things that was built into our system. So just shoot me an email when you need it, um, and I'm happy to just send you a spreadsheet. Might just be raw data, but I can get that to you. But so, like, if we needed a monthly report of everybody who submitted and everybody who attained, we could get that. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Easy question, and that that was definitely a, a priority in developing a certification bank to be able to to report back. This is Chris. Hi there. <laughs> um, just to follow up on that, so that will the report differentiate? people that have just submitted for completion versus those that have passed and attained full credential. Yes. And it can even, uh, Brandy, if I'm not mistaken, it can denote who's in process. Yep. And then um, it will, all of the micro credentials have sort of a, a loose projected number of hours required, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. And we, so we'll know exactly which one they completed too. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Brandy, now, this is Patty. I know we had talked a little bit about NEA 360 and how that might adapt, adapt in there. Um, I know, and if, for other people, it's, I've been, everything I do, whether it's a report or an email to someone on these, I've been kind of thrown in there. It'd be really nice if the NEA 360 would make that connection. Um, have you heard any more since you and I talked about it a couple months ago when they're going to do that? No, um, NEA 360 is such a huge project, um, and there's, it's slow. It's just slow going, um, so we can't, you know, tie into that database really until they're done with their work on their end. So, sorry. Brandy, there was a question from Nell in Arizona about an ongoing monthly report. I don't know if it will set, if it will set up automatic reports or not. I didn't think it did. No, but I, I can send them to you. I could probably set up a system if there were enough of you who um, had hits um, and wanted a monthly report. I could probably set up some sort of system, but I haven't done that yet where I just send a list of spreadsheets to everybody every month. Right now, what I do is I pull a monthly report and if there's a state that all of a sudden had a ton of people on it, I will send that to them and just let them know. Um, there hasn't been, most of the places who are getting a ton of hits are places like Aurora, Colorado, who's offering you know PD credit and has really done a heavy launch for this. And Billings now is getting a lot of hits because they did the same thing. So um, when I know of a place that is implementing something like that with our micro-credentials, giving me a heads up allows me to be better about communicating with you about who's, who's using the system and who's not. So if you have some exciting happenings going on, let me know and I will work with you to set up some sort of schedule or something. Awesome. Good questions. And, and as you can tell, this is a part of working out a system that actually meets everyone's needs. But until we kind of figure out what those needs are, you know, a system hasn't yet been put in place, but they're definitely 
uh, it definitely can be. And what we're also working on is we're working on a way to give a state affiliate their own kind of partition. So if they wanted to use their own assessors and have their own branded page, they would have administrative <laughs> control over that piece of it, but not have access to everybody's data. So that will be, I think we're gonna have a preview of that build in June, and hopefully we'll be able to launch something out in the fall. So um, there would be some cost sharing associated with that, but if anybody's super interested in that kind of a, a system where you're taking on the assessors and all of that, let us know. And we, we would love to have you know a couple people work with us to test it too, so, yep. Awesome. Are there other questions or uh, are, are pressing comments that you just wanna share? Um, obviously, uh, we are available. Sonia, Brandy, and I are happy to answer questions that you have. As a follow-up, we will uh, make sure that everyone in this group and the group uh, last night that were part, part of this session will be invited again to a follow-up session this summer. Uh, to just touch base on your planning, on what else you need, uh, possibly come prepared to, you know, kind of a share, you know, share documents, uh, provide links to anything, or maybe make sure that you've put it into ed communities and you can point to materials that you've developed to, to help someone else out. And so it's kind of a make and take type of session, uh, but we definitely want to provide you an opportunity to to meet with each other and, and use one another as, as your best resource. Other questions uh, before we wrap up? And then Brandy, I'll toss it back to you uh, to wrap up. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to wrap up. Hey, this, oh, this is Sonia. I just wanted to share a tip with those of you who might be interested. I learned this recently myself. Um, uh, in the chat screen, you'll see on the right hand side lower portion it's there's a little um shaded area that says more m-o-r-e if you'd like to save the chat uh text of this meeting just hover over that and then click save chat and it will i think by default save onto your uh, documents drive but then you can move it to whatever drive you you'd like so I've done that for for this uh, session, and I just want to thank everyone for their great questions. And we hope to really encourage you again to join Ed Community, so that really I think that these webinars, um, you know, introduce you to that if you're not already involved, and you know you can learn from each other because. We just have a limited capacity here, and really, you will become the experts. So thank you again for everyone's participation. Thank you all.